Hi, I am uh, Michael Lamas. I'm the owner of Audio Skies. Uh, we are an importer and uh, distributor of high-end audio in North America. We are introducing uh, GMF to the North American market. And in this system, we have um, Idian Audio, which is also one of the brands that we distribute. They do digital from Greece. And we have, of course, the famous uh, Harbert 4.3 speakers as well. And, and all GMF uh, cables. I think a lot of people might not know about GMF, so I'll just tell you a little bit about it. GMF was, uh, came about, was established in the early 80s, and they've been doing... Um, and are they French? They're French, yeah. Okay. They're, they're, everything is handcrafted, designed, and built in France on their, in their own factories. So they have been making amplifiers for a lot of the big recording studios in the world um, since the 80s. Uh, Nashville, the famous uh, studio by Tom Hindley, uh, New York, Paris, Switzerland, so forth. Uh, the Norwegian famous label that has 89 Grammys, uh, 2L, they use their Powerline filter for all their recordings. So they're very heavy, were very heavy in the recording studios for a long time. They're already very, very well known by, uh, you know, audio aficionados in, in, in Asia. And they're very picky who they work with because they're really, really passionate about what they do. So we were lucky to get the line and we're now uh, introducing it to the American market. Okay. And um, I think what is unique about them, uh, which sets them apart from other audio companies, is that they only make reference components. So they're not thinking about price points. They have no integrated amplifiers. They don't have, you know, let's try to see how can we make this cost less or 10,000. They only have reference level. So all the R&D, everything that they do for, you know, for over 30 years, 40 years, has been about how can we make it <clears throat> as good as possible. And their philosophy is basically like, let's, for their amplifiers, is to not lose anything and not add anything. So it just sends whatever the artist has made to your speakers with great control and you know very noisy so the way that they do that which is extremely another unique thing about them is that it's the only company that uses these very very thick gold-plated boards now they're so thick that these you, circuit boards yes so i can show you they're so thick that you can't use automatic process so every th component on it is hand soldered both sides and through so they're sitting like this, like a jeweler with a, you know, Patek Philippe, uh, Philippe uh, watch under a magnifying glass on these thick boards. All the boards populating them one by one. Even their solder is special. They made their own. So same with the components. But, More. But let me make sure I've got this right. The traces on the board are gold. Yeah, the whole, the whole, the whole board. Yeah, all the traces. And we're not just talking a flash of gold because then you can still do it. That's what a lot of other companies, they're doing. It's really, really thick. I can't remember how thick, but it's too thick to you. You cannot make, a machine cannot do it. So you have to hand solder. Got it. Um, same with their components. So they have been working with uh, specialty companies in France that work with aerospace, high-speed trains and so forth. So they have a relationship with them. So in, they don't use the best capacitors and resistors you can get. They're like, no, we want better. So they have these specialty companies make these capa capacitors, resistors, what have you, to their specs specifically so they can get exactly how they want it. Um, after they're done, they're running for 100 hours, hand calibrated by the chief designer who then sits and compares it with their reference models. You know, it's, it's a seal cabinet so no dust can get in, it has a rose gold engraving. Uh, there's protection on them so even if it's short, circuit the speaker wise is not going to be but if you open the lid and look inside I mean they look even better on the inside so it they're just so passionate because they only do like I said reference level which means that's what all their R&D does they're not trying to do anything else they're not worried about a specific price point now of course this means it's not cheap but it's not even close to the most expensive either. So, so can you walk us through the products we've got here that we see? Yeah, of course. So this is, they have three power amps and this is their smallest. This is a dual mono, uh, the 6002. Uh, it's 250 watts in, in eight and then it kind of almost doubles up as you go down. 
can drive anything down to one ohm. It could go lower, they just put a cutoff at one ohm. Um, this is their dual mono preamp. They only have one. As I said, it doesn't matter which of the power amps you get because they made a reference. Um, this is their 1.5. Uh, and you really should feel this uh, volume not turning it. Actually, I did. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's beautifully yeah, It's damped. fantastic. So they even make that themselves. They're like, well, you know, we want it to be. They took a long time. So this is the, the uh, power line filter. It's passive. Uh, they have a bigger model. The bigger model is what the 2L, uh, the record label 2L uses. And these cables, I don't know if you can see some of them, but... Those are their speaker cables. It's eight strands. Um, they're also, so everything handcrafted in-house, designed in-house, built by them, checked by them. Um, and I think uh, for people that want to hear what the artist actually created without trying to color it or give it a certain sound or, you know, make it and still retain this phenomenal control over the speakers, but have this natural musicality and dynamics. I think it's something really special. Just a brief interruption, esteemed viewers. As you may know, I'm Tom Martin, Chief Content Officer of The Absolute Sound. We have a new product. It's on the Substack platform, and we're going to do some interesting things with Substack. First of which is reader questions and answers. Each Monday, readers will submit questions, we'll pick the most interesting ones, and we'll answer the questions on Friday. We'll also have early access to articles and special blogs that don't appear anywhere else. We hope you'll join us. It's only a cost of a cup of coffee per month. Just check on the screen or in the show notes below. Thanks, and now back to the show. In the power amp line, you say this is the smallest. Yes. Um, that means the other ones are higher power? Yeah, well, they're higher power, but they're also better. Um, so there's the next one up is the, a pair of monos, which are called 7001s, and then the top ones are 9001s. Um, not only do they have more power, but they also now, for example, the 9001 has two huge transformers that are like this. The, the output current of the top model is like 330 amps. It has uh, four times the outside, I mean, uh, output boards that, that this one has. So they basically populate it with even more of the best components that you can, which gives, it doesn't only make it more powerful, but it also makes it sound a lot better. We first got this in, and I listened to it, and I was amazed, and you know, how, how, how can it get a lot better than this? And I got the smaller monos, and I was like, oh, okay, it could get better, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and and it, was, it was quite a bit better. So it, it's, it's, um, it, it's, uh, it's, I really like working them with them. One thing that, I, like, the packing is, is fantastic. Like, you know, it, you even get, when you buy the product, they will include a CD that's been recorded on their amps. Like, that's uh, another, I mean, it's not important, but it's a nice little thing that they add. Um... They even have this cool cover that it comes to that fits it, so that if you're leaving home, uh, it doesn't go under the feet, though. So you can put it on and off without having to lift the amp, and you don't have to disconnect it in the back because it has the holes for the back, so you could actually cover it, turn it off without disconnecting or lifting it. I mean, they just think of every little thing. How can we make this sound as good, but also for people that, you know, want the best of the best. Like if you don't want to, well, I would like to have this. Okay, we have that option. Um, of course, like all um, great amplifiers, they are heavy. You know, that's great power supply. You know, they are heavy. So, um, but not insanely so. It's not like okay, you need four cranes and, and eight people to lift them. Then it's not that. Yeah, I, I, I've. I've I've been there, so that, that's that's kind of nice. And did and they, you say there are some new cables too? Yeah, so we actually have a world premiere of this is a, I better show it from the back. This is their smaller, they have two XLR, two XLR cables and two um, speaker cables. This is a smaller one that has never been shown anywhere else in the world. 
Uh, this is the first time they ever played. Um, down there, that's their bigger speaker cables. Um, they make all kinds of cables, power, um, and again... Yeah, kind of anything you need. There's only one level. Like, they don't have eight different lines of cables. They're just like, okay, let's make it as good as we can, and that's it. The, like, I was there at the factory, and they had a face, but, oh, that's beautiful. It's like, oh, that's going, that's throwing out. It's not good. I was like, what's wrong with it? Well, you know, in the certain light, they could see a little, I was like, I don't see it. <laughs> but no, out. <laughs> so, uh, it, I think it's, 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 it's another little thing that, that they even have, if you want, um, if you're using um, RCAs, they have invented thicker ones so that you can add those as well for, that they have for their cables as an option, which is an even better connection. Um, you can ground this through the speaker cable as well. Um, it has a UV, if you want to see, uh, when it's playing. Um, but the, basically, the, what they're trying to do is just, as I said, this don't add anything and don't lose anything and yep. still rain, retain control and, and musicality. And all their stuff is analog, so the reason you have Ideon here is because uh, JMF isn't doing digital, is that right? They actually have a transport which is out of this world, which actually can play Blu-ray audio, which is a, it's probably the highest format you can get in digital. Uh, it's not very common, there's not a lot of material on it. Um, actually, a lot of the material that's on there has been recorded on their apps. Huh. But it, that thing weighs like, uh, it's like a 90 pound transport, you know, it's like. <laughs> but no, they are mainly uh, doing analog and they have also two um, different phono stages. The top phono stage actually is very unique. Um, so what they did, they spent three years traveling to all these old record studios. You know, for the mono records before the RIA uh, era, there's these different curves. And they wanted to get the specific facts, not what someone has written or someone said, but what did the engineers from that studio actually, like what are the you know, curve is like and what does it do and why this and this. So the top one has those three curves. So if you have a lot of mono records, you can actually hear it on the actual curve that they were recorded with back in the day. And I was there listening to some mono records that they have from the really, really old time. And it's... It, it's if you, thing. Yeah, it, it, it's, it really makes a difference. Uh -huh. Because the rear curve is a, is a uniform, you know, that's made for after area. And it, if you, it, it, he switched, you know, from that specific curve to then to the rear curve. And it just sounded off because all the, you know, the different sound levels are, are off. So if you like these old mono records, and there are some great, you know, Duke Ellington's early recording. I mean, there's some good stuff out there. Uh, you know, Muddy Waters, uh, even Beatles and stuff were, you know, before mm -hmm. mono. But it's only for before the rear curve um, that these apply. So that's why there's two models, because they don't want you to pay more money. If you don't have a lot of mono records, you can buy a phone state that doesn't have that and save some money. So it's not because there's a real difference in quality. It's just like, okay, this is one. If you have a lot of these, get the bigger one. Cool. Well, that's fantastic. I think it's a very interesting brand. And, uh, yeah, I uh, hope someday we get to see the insides. And Yeah, well, people can go on I there. Listened, it sounds really nice. People can go on there. Like, these are the three driver... Um, output boards on the big monos which we'll try to put some of that in the video we'll get those there, yeah and from the website there is there is insides of this i mean even Perfect. the cables that they use inside is like <laughs> yeah. but one of the uh the cool things i kept saying because of the how they make it that they're not compromising with anything they're like well this is what we want to use okay that's going to cost three times as much or take five times as long well we want to do that so I kept calling it the, the Bugatti of amplifiers. And what I didn't realize is that their, the Bugatti factory is 50 miles from their location in France. So when I was there, they took me by the, the Bugatti castle. I was like, okay. <laughs> and of course, they come in silver as well, if people want them. Uh, can you give us the price points on these three pieces? Yeah, so this is their dual mono, their smallest power. It's uh, 40,000. 
This is their dual mono preamp. It's 36,000. 36, uh, this is their smallest um, power line filter. It's 19. And the um, phono stages? So the phono stage is, uh, the smaller one is uh, 22, the top one is 40. And the, the bigger monos above this is 77,000. And the top one is 150,000 for a pair. Okay. And the power on the top one is? It's uh, 1,000 watts in 4, four ohms. Michael, thank you. I thank appreciate it. Thank you for it. coming.